spoiled, right? Because these wines are so well made, so well balanced, nothing confected, nothing cheap. I'm sure you've taken care of my liver today, so I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And yeah, so what are we looking at damage wise? We're looking at 60, 40, 30, $130. We work hard for our money. Okay, I'm excited to go to the reveal. Let's do it. So welcome back to Wine and Whiskey with Steve and I'm smiling. Why am I smiling? Because I have wine in front of me <laughs> and I don't know what it is. However, today there's a little bit of a twist on this though. Um, so we're starting to do a little bit of like educational information videos um, on the channel and so Wine 101, how to. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be doing today. Okay, so for our first episode of Wine 101, how to maestro has selected Amarone. So one of these wines here is an Amarone. Before we can find Amarone in the glass, we need to know, well, what the heck are we looking for when we're looking for Amarone? Okay, and we'll be doing this with every grape varietal and every wine style out there. Okay, now when it comes to Amarone, we're not dealing with a grape. Okay, we're doing we're dealing with a style of wine. Okay, so the method in which the wine was made. I keep pointing to number one, but it could be it could be any of these. I don't know which one is the Amarone. Um, so Amarone, its style. Um, the whole purpose of it is to concentrate flavor. Okay. Um, now the reason why they're doing this method is because the grapes that they're working with initially in Veneto are not big structured grapes. They don't have thick skins. Uh, there's, there's, um, there's not a lot of, of, uh, of high sugars. Um, the climate is uh, not like Napa Valley. Okay. So they need to do something to give some boldness to the wine, character to the wine. So one of the things they do to maximize flavor of the grapes is drying the grapes. So before they go into crushing and fermentation, what they do is they pick the grapes, whether they're doing hand harvesting or mechanical harvesting. I mean, that, that's up to the, that's up to the, um, the, the, the uh, I was gonna say the chateau, the villa, the, the bodega if you're in Spain, okay? It's, it's up to the house uh, what, uh, what they're doing. Um, but in terms of the drying period, so the drying period usually lasts from anywhere from three to four months, okay? And what they're doing is they're drying them on racks so that the moisture can, e can evaporate from inside the grape and then you're left with a higher amount of sugar and acids and those give a lot more structure to the wine, they give a lot more flavor to the wine, they just enhance the varietal characteristics, okay? So, and in doing so, if, you're, if then you're gonna go ferment those grapes that have been dried, you're gonna have high sugar levels. If you have high sugar levels, then you're gonna have high alcohol levels, okay? And that's what we have in Amarone. 15% um, alcohol is the minimum for Amarone. Some Amarones will go up to 16 and 17% in alcohol. So it's almost port-like in, in weight in your mouth, okay? And, and, by, and alcohol by volume. Now, when it comes to residual sugars in the glass with Amarone, you're getting anywhere from as low as maybe six grams up to 18 grams of residual sugar, okay? So this guy is gonna feel a lot more viscous in the mouth. He's gonna feel smoother in the mouth. He's even gonna feel heavier in the glass. When you're holding the glass and you're swirling them around, you're gonna feel that extra weight from the residual sugars and from the high alcohol. In terms of color, what are we expecting to see with Amarone? Well, because in order to make Amarone, you need to be in wood for at least two years, okay? So you need to have maturation in wood for at least two years. So wood we know is porous, right? So we have oxidation reduction happening when, you, when you're in the wood. So that means that the color of the wine is gonna change. You're gonna have all these different compounds that are created in the wine, but also the wine's color is gonna change. It's gonna go toward a lighter color, a lighter hue toward toward the edges, okay, just by time. The longer it stays aging, the longer it stays maturing, the, the more the color is going to go to the lighter side, uh, which is the opposite for white wines. White wines will get darker with age, red wines will get lighter. Um, so two years in barrel, okay, and then after that, most producers will leave 
their Amaronian bottle for two years. Okay, some for three years, some for four years. Okay, uh, it all again, it all depends on the producer and how much they want the tannins to resolve before they put the wine onto market. Okay, so in terms of its color, what are we looking for? We're looking for some garnet, some brick, maybe some orange around the edges. Okay, that will tell you that you have an Amarone of maybe uh, six years of age. If you have something uh, four years of age, then you may get a little bit more toward the, toward the uh, you know, like a purplish, reddish um, uh, color. But again, that's what we're looking for. Does it mean, you know, that's exactly what it is? No, but that's, that's kind of what uh, we're looking for in the glass for color. Now, when it comes for aroma and, and palette, uh, we should be getting a lot of dark fruits. Okay, so a lot of prunes, a lot of prunes, a lot of figs, and a raisiny character. Okay, prunes, figs, raisins, those are your hallmarks that we're looking for in Amarone. Then tertiary flavors we want to pick up on, um, baking spices such as clove. Okay, clove will be in there. Um, you may get a little bit of cocoa. Okay, so a little bit of like a bitter, bitter chocolate. Um, yeah, those are, I would say those are pretty much uh, the, uh, the hallmarks of a, of a well-made Amarone. Now, again, depending on the style, you know, so the style I just described with, uh, with, the, um, with the raisins and the date, uh, raisins, figs and prunes and chocolate and a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of smoke, that's typical, maybe leading toward New World style. Uh, you can have more savory ones that'll have a little bit of rosemary in there, maybe a little bit of cherry, a little bit of leather, but you're still going to get... Um, you know that those deep dark fruits in there you're still gonna have some type of a fig in there yeah in the mouth these guys are big in the mouth okay they're gonna feel big and smooth mouth coating and creamy um, because of because of the sugar and the alcohol the alcohol just coats the mouth and you'll have that nice creamy big bold mouth feel um, yeah it's a excellent wine um, takes a lot of time to make uh, and uh, it takes a lot of work to, to make it well okay so, that being said, um, I think we have a good starting point as to what we're looking for in the glass. Okay, so we're looking out for any type of prune, fig, raisin, sweet baking spices, maybe a little bit of smoke. Okay. Now, when all said and done, what do we want to pair this guy with? Also boko, baby. Also uh, if you want to pair them with a meal, you know, with a, with a main course. Also buku, mushroom risotto is nice. Um, but if not, the sweetness of this guy goes so well with the saltiness of Parmesan. Okay, Parmesan, salami, okay, something with a lot of salt, sweet, salt, sweet, salt. They dance with each other, okay, opposites, opposites attract. Okay, now speaking of opposites these glasses are two opposite of my mouth <laughs> so let's bring them closer okay let's get into it wine number one wine number one is looking crimson and he's got a little bit of um like uh, like a brick orange rim i'm getting like a he's brooding this guy he's brooding black cherry balsamic he's got quite long Thick legs. I mean, look at look at the look at the legs on that guy. Mushroom earth and rosemary. I'm not getting that classic fig and prune that I was looking for. I, I am getting dark cherry. I'm getting balsamic. I'm getting rosemary. Quite a bit of earth. I really really like this wine. The density of fruit in there, I can tell, um, like well extracted fruit. So coming from old vines, perhaps. Okay, onto the palate. Cherry, rosemary, leather. I do believe I'm getting a little bit of bitter orange peel. This is a very well-made wine. This was reminding me of something Italian because of that cherry and the leather and the rosemary. I think I'm getting a bit of chestnut in it too. He's a deep, dark, and brooding. This guy is. He's um, he's like, he's blood-like. Yeah. So. Now the legs, I don't think he's that high alcohol though. I mean, so the legs, I think is from the oldness of the wine and the, and the extraction. 
of the fruit. I think this was coming from at least 40 year old vines. This is not Amarone. Man, he's from Italy, but what could he be with? He doesn't have big tannins. I'm not chewing, right? But he does have good acidity. So this is leading, you know, this is maybe some type of a Chianti Grand Selezion. I'm thinking, I'm thinking this is Chianti Classico Grand Selezion. Because I get the acidity, um, but I get, you know, that di nice dark cherry. Um, dark cherry because this has some age to him, right? 14, 20, 15. He's Chianti Grand Selezion. But not Amarone. No prunes, no figs. What else could he be, though? I'm really getting, like, so I'm getting the cherry, right? Can I confuse that in any way with a Rioja, with Tempranillo? I don't think so, because I'm not picking up on the oak that I would in a Rioja. Can I confuse this with a Bordeaux? Not from the Medoc, or not from the left bank, because I'm not picking up on the Cabernet, I'm not picking up on the Cassis, I don't get pencil shavings. I'm, and then I'm not getting the plumminess from the right bank in the Merlot. So I don't see myself going anywhere else other than Sangiovese in this case. See that? Wow, the, um, the herbs really come through now. Like that rosemary and sage. There's a smokiness to him. There is a little bit of a cocoa to him though. And again, those sweet baking spices could have come from some type of... Um, maturation in the French Barrique. Okay, I'm going to save him for the reveal so I can be disappointed. Well, Grand Selezion, you're looking again, you know, um, $40, right? So this guy, 40, 50 bucks is worth. Okay, wine number two. This guy's the most um, oxidized or so toward his uh toward the rim he's he is brick orange brick orange oh i think we found our amarone wow this does have age there's an oxidized stewed fruit happening here <laughs> fig raisin i don't think i'm really so much getting prune on this right now as i'm getting there's also this weird plum appleness happening to him though. So now I'm a little torn because yeah, he's got this this oxidized nose. You know, when you leave you cut an apple, leave it on the counter, or it turns brown, right? It gets oxidized. It has that type of a of a thing happening. So I don't know. I mean, is this has this bottle been opened before? Is it from an old Corbin bottle? Is it from a very old vintage? Is, you know, it's um, the color. The color says age. Now we have to see what the palette says. Figs. But this is old. What did you do downstairs? Did you crack my Zanato from 2008? He's more savory. Like, in terms of... I mean, there's styles of making Amarone, as I said, right? Um, this one leads to the more balsamic and, and herbal than it does to um, to the ripeness of fruit. So this this could be like a... a like a 2012 Amarone, something that has seen 10 years of age. I don't see this taking me anywhere else in the world other than other than Italy. This is definitely a passamental style. I get a lot of balsamic on the nose. A lot of balsamic. Dried fruits, dried fruits, dried fig, dried raisin, dried rosemary, dried so this is not your typical, like, let's say 2016, 2018. I don't even know if you can get Amarone right now. 2018 is probably still not released. So 2016, this is not, you're not going to get those, the ripeness of the fruits. 
you're getting dried fruits in this one. This everything is dried. It's oxidized. It, it's old. It's not spoiled in any way. More subtle, right? So now, like this guy, we're talking about Amarone. What do we want to pair him with? And blah 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 blah. I don't want to pair this with the also Boko, okay? Because all the juices and the fats and this guy, he's because he's been aged, he's delicate, right? He's got little nuances in there that you don't want to hide. You don't want the wine to be overpowered by something like a big bold dish like the also Boko. In this case, you're good with just having, you know, your charcuterie, a little piece of smoked, oh, fennel, fennel, like a, like a rosemary or fennel sausage with your Parmesan. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Now, if that's someone's first time Marone, I don't know if they will like it as much as I do. Okay, because this is very different, as I said. Balsam if you like balsamic vinegar and you like rosemary and you like a little bit of earth and, and, and mushroom and, and you like dried figs, then this is your cup of wine or glass of wine. Again, because of the age, right, you have to consider that you're not going to get quality Amarone for less than $40 if it's on sale, right? Um, so considering that I'm saying he's a decade old, you know, you have to be looking at least in the $60 range, 60, 60, $60 range, but he's still there. Raisin, raisin, dried raisin. Yeah, really nice. I still have the flavor, so I could maybe even go 95 points for this one, right? Because the flavor is still sitting with me. It's still sitting. Okay, let's go on to wine number, wine number three. Here we go. Value in the glass, baby. Okay, this one is the most uh, deepest in color wise toward the violet spectrum. He is not translucent at all. He is quite opaque. I cannot see anything through this. This is very deep. And I guess you could say purplish, but there is still that blood red in him. So. Again, color-wise, is not something like a, you know, a purple monster from the U.S. or from Australia that has mega purple 13 in it and stuff like that. This is, it's not that type of a, it's like a, it's just a density, a darkness of, um, of fruit. So, oh boy, he's got a really nice nose. This is different. I'm just like black cherry and prune. And look, he's extracted too. He's he's coming from quality grapes. Maestro, what are you doing here? This is going to turn out to be very expensive. If this guy I'm saying is forty dollars and this is sixty dollars, we're already up to hundred bones. Oh no, it's going to be seventeen dollars and twenty dollars, isn't it? I'm getting balsamic again. Rosemary. Something is telling me, because of the color of him, okay, because of the color, and there's tannins on this one that we didn't get. See, now I'm having a difficulty speaking, okay? So, and I said, the, the darkness, the extraction of the fruit, um, and this is what's putting me on to what I think this is, Cabernet, Petit Verdot. El Nero. El Nero. I don't know. I'm thinking El Nero. Um, but I could be wrong. But I'm going to try it again and see because my tannins, like, I'm not getting the acidity that I get in, typically in Italian wine. Okay, so that rules out Sangiovese. Look, I might, like, I might, like, my, 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 my lips are sticking to my teeth. It's hard, you know. Can I pick up any on any, any cassis? No, I mean, I'm still getting like. Balsamic notes and mm. there's some French oak in there. There's a chocolate component to them. I'm getting like black cherry, maybe a bit of cassis, lots of chocolate, nice dry, firm tannins. I enjoy this wine. I enjoy this wine a lot. Very different styles, man. Number one had the acidity, didn't have the tannins. Number two had this complete crazy savory dried. 
smooth mouthfeel that just had a, such a long finish of, of, of figs and raisins. And, and But this one here, this is not allowing me to speak because the, my cheeks are just sticking to my teeth. So, thick grin to see thick skinned grapes from Italy what could we what could we be looking at if we have thick skinned grapes in Italy Alianico and the color wise this is not you know Barolo Bar, um, Barbaresco Nebbiolo has acid and tannins yes we have tannins but we don't have the acid and the color is nowhere close to that profile so to get something with this color like this what do you have Primitivo but Primitivo doesn't have tannins like this. Yes, it is a dark grape. It is going to be high alcohol. It's all in the head, right? I see something that's dark. Then I, I, I find the tannins and I think, okay, like what do I know that is made in Italy like that style that we have access to right now? So, you know, this is some type of Cab, Petit Verdot blend. Cab because of the tannins, Petit Verdot because of the color. Um... I'm happy to pay, you know, thirty dollars up for for this guy. He's a good wine. I really like him. If yeah, if he's any, if he's under thirty dollars, then it's a best value buy for sure. Again, what do you want to pair this guy with? This guy can go with Yasuo Boku now. <laughs> Easy. I'm spoiled, right? Because these wines are so well made, so well balanced. Nothing confected, nothing cheap. My sure you've taken care of my liver today, so I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And yeah, so what are we looking at damage wise? We're looking at 60, 40, 30, $130. We work hard for our money. Okay, I'm excited to go through the reveal. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. Wine number one, reveal. I said that this guy was the Chianti Classico Grand Selezion. I gave this guy 94 points I believe so let's see what we're dealing with here he definitely was not the Amarone he's a Bordeaux shape I don't know I think I'm wrong three two one what the hell's this <laughs> what the hell's this I've never even seen this from Umbria I was talking about Umbria with white wines earlier. Oh. Tiso Nero. Wow. You son of a gun. 2016. Mm -hmm. This is really good wine. Like this is a really good wine. I've never had this before. I've never tried this before. What the heck? Tiso Nero. What can you tell me about this? Sangiovese blend. Sangio Vesi Blend. What's the price point? Holy shit. $17.95. This is a good buy, everybody. Wow. $17.95. Sangio Vesi Blend. Had the, had the structure of a Grand Selezio, man. That's crazy. Wow. Damn, guys. $17.95. Go get it. Are you kidding me? Holy! How much percent Sangiovese? Yeah, so there you go. This guy here at the LCBO really retailing for seventeen ninety five, and this is where I get annoyed with people saying LCBO. Yeah, you have bad prices. SAQ in Quebec, this guy's going for twenty one dollars, and then around the world, this guy's going for twenty five dollars up. So Sangiovese primarily ninety percent Sangiovese, eighteen months in oak, two thousand and sixteen. Ridiculous, ridiculous value, ridiculous value. This blows me away. This is really good wine. We're buying more of this one for sure. This is crazy. Okay, here we go. Reveal number two. And for this one, we're hoping that this is the Amarone, for goodness sake, because I said we're doing an episode on how to Amarone, for God's sakes. At least I can how to something. The first one was a little bit of a miss, but. Not so much. I mean, I said it was Sangiovese. It was Sangiovese. It was just from Umbria, and it wasn't from Tuscany. But what can you do? It is what it is. It spends the same, similar time in, oh, 18 months. Right? Two years for Grand Selezion. So you're very close there. Value, 2016. Incredible. Anyways, 
on to <laughs> reveal number two. Reveal number two. Okay, I'm liking the shape. This is your Amarone shape, right? This, um, oh, oh, what is this guy? Some raised font here? What is this? Don't tell me this is like Tamazi Amarone. He won something. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Three, two, one. Hey, oh, oh, he's a nice one. 2000. 2015 okay not bad not bad okay I said it had some age to it right I said 2012 I was off by three years not too bad not too bad 15% to canter gave it 97 points but this is a very well-made Amarone uh, and so different from the last Amarone that we had too right so what we've had the Zanato and the other guy was the uh, Cole Christi uh, Michele Castel Castelliani um, and that was very ripe in modern new world. This was old world style, very, very rustic and very, very cool, man. If you, yeah, that's another show, right? Side by side, Amarone is new world versus old world style. Ridiculous. Yeah. What's price point on this one, Maestro? 48.95, okay, so good value, good value. This is awesome, right? This is why we do things blind. So I said value wise, he's 60 bucks above. Um, because myself, I like that dried fig. I like the dried fruit. I love the herbs. I love that old rustic feel, right? Um, when we did the, the Michele Castelliani Coli Christi, that was $45.95 for that bottle. It was a 2016 Amarone, so only one year difference, but incredibly different style. The other one was very, very forward in the dark fruit prunes and, and ripe figs um, and raisins, a lot of black Thompson raisins. This one here, you have your like your dried Sultana raisins. Okay, very, very different, very different styles. Um, so yeah, that's uh, again. So if you're an Amarone fan and, and, and you want to experiment and see different styles at good price points, you're not going to find better priced Amarones than, than these two that, that, that we've done. Okay, $46 for the Coli Christi. And this one that you said, sorry, was 48? 48, 48, $48.95, $49 for a nice savory old world style Amarone. Very well done. Um, yeah, very, very happy with this. So definitely a must try if you like dry, savory, big wines and you have a budget of $49 a bottle yeah. okay here we are reveal number three so this was the darkest of them all and I said that and it had the most tannins of them all so we're looking for some type of a thick skin grape on this one I said it was some type of a mixture of Cabernet and Petit Verdot um, I also said maybe Alejandro I didn't say at the time that it could have been maybe a multiple channel but it could be multiple channels as well. I don't know. Price point, I said it was 30 bucks for this guy. We'll see uh, how red in the face I will be after uh, I open my eyes for this one. Well, at least he's cork. He's not screw cap. <laughs> he's a heavy bottle and he's got a good punt to him. So how far off was I? What are you laughing at me, maestro? <laughs> I hear you in the corner making fun of me. I said this was Il Nero, perhaps. What'd you do? What'd you do to me? Hey, Montepulciano, that's okay. Tatone. What can you do? There's nothing wrong with it. I was right with the tannins when I said multiple. What can you do? No, I'm not bad. I'm not disappointed. It was good. And you know what happened from the last time that we tried this guy, which was months ago, the time in the glass. So it was able to open up, fruit came forward, wood went down, and there you go. Completely different, right? So yeah, excellent buy. What can you do? It is what it is. Very nice old world style. Nothing confected. Good use of wood. It worked. It worked. Lots of tannins though, so it needs something with, with fat. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with that wine. Why wouldn't I be happy with that wine? 
This is a crazy steal, right? What is this guy? Seventeen dollars? Yeah, seventeen bucks. Reputable producer too. Nothing wrong with that. Montevil Giant the Brutso. Yeah, you know what? So in all of my assessments, I did pretty well because I said the first guy was Sangiovese and he was Sangiovese. He was just from a different region. What can you do? I said 2015, he's 2016. I said 24 months in Oak. This guy's 18 months in Oak. What I get wrong? The region. Fine. He wasn't in Chianti. He was in Umbria. Whoops. Whatever. He's value, right? Because I said that this guy was about $40 and now we know he's 17. So what do we learn from this? Go get him. 17. This guy over here, very quality Amarone. Amarone, I said, $60, upwards, $49, value. Tone, I said 30 bucks. Cabernet and Petit Verdot. Montepulciano, 100%, $17. Very similar in their styles. When mixed from, from Italy, what can you do? What can you do, right? It's hard, it's hard. Cabernet Sauvignon in Italy is going to be very, very different from Cabernet Sauvignon in, in Bordeaux, from Napa, Argentina, so forth, right? Uh, but I was looking for something that gave me the tannins. And, and I didn't pick up on, uh, on the acidity that I would sometimes get in this. So, so yeah, that's why I went with the Cabernet. But um, what can you do? You know, we uh, at least from the experiments, we get value in the glass, and that's the most important thing, right? Okay, so... Just quickly to round up in terms of what we said, one, two, and three. Look at the size of the bottle in the Tetone. Like, what are these guys doing? They could have made probably the same wine for $10 and if they cut back on the bottle. It's crazy. It's heavier than the Amarone's bottle. <laughs> Anyways, so I will hold our Tizzonero. I wonder if our Italian friends out there can tell us, translate for us, what does Tizzonero mean? I, I'm thinking of something in my head, but I don't want to say it on YouTube. <laughs> something black. Something black. <laughs> Tizzonero. <laughs> Anyways, so thanks everybody for putting up with uh, me and my show through this blind tasting. Again, if you have any questions, comments, please type them below okay and again tell me what you're drinking in your glass tell me if you tried any of these guys and most importantly for you Italians out there what the heck does Tizzo Nero mean until next time always looking for value in the glass cheers